I shall be talking to you about uh, corrosive or acid injury of the foot pipe and stomach. Uh, this is something which we see in uh, quite often in our clinical practice when uh, people try to consume either bathroom cleaning uh, fluids like Harpic, toilet cleaners or acids available in the laboratory either accidentally or by choice. Actually this accidental ingestion is seen in uh, infants and uh, children who by uh, mistakenly swallow this uh, uh, colorless fluids taking it granted for water and then sustain injury to their mouth, the foot pipe and stomach and uh, also seen in youngsters uh, who during exam times, especially when the exam results are announced, we have seen quite a lot of young girls uh, consuming acid in an attempt to kill themselves. And the third category of people who also try to consume this is uh, the goldsmiths who try to mix alcohol with uh, the aqua regia which is a mixture of uh, sulfuric and nitric acid uh, used in their trade and uh, that will cause uh, severe burns to the foot pipe and stomach. Uh, some of them take just a little bit and spit it out because of the uh, corrosive nature. Some others uh, swallow, a gulp, take a gulp and that is likely to cause uh, more injury to the foot pipe. When, whenever they consume this, uh, immediately they will vomit out and uh, the, some of them vomit blood and a few others will develop what is called strider where they have uh, difficulty in breathing because of the acute swelling of the throat. They are usually brought to the hospital and then a first aid is given. A uh, couple of occasions uh, the doctors try to um, bring out the fluid from within the stomach and if possible try to do an endoscopy and uh, look at the amount of injury that occurs to the foot pipe or stomach. Actually depending upon the concentration of the uh, ingestant and whether it is an alkali or acid and the volume, the extent of injury takes place. Um, the, within uh, soon after their admission to the hospital, um, in about a day or two they will sort of settle down and try to able to uh, drink uh, liquids and that is when they get discharged. Some of these patients um, will be administered steroids uh, to prevent inflammation of the foot pipe. If the ingestion of this acid and alkali is too much, there are chances when the foot pipe can totally get destroyed and also the stomach and that will require emergency surgery and but then that will e eventually lead to some very disastrous consequence. But a majority of them when they become alright at the end of 2 or 3 days, they go back home, they feel alright because they are able to uh, swallow liquids but at the end of about a month, they slowly develop dysphagia or uh, inability to drink water or eat food and that is when the problem starts and then, uh, then when they come back to the hospital, the doctors will try to assess the damage again to see how much is the foot pipe involvement and the stomach and this is done by two methods. One is by barium where uh, a white liquid is given and our patient is asked to swallow and uh, the x-ray is taken to see whether the foot pipe is uh, blocked and if it is blocked in how many places and whether the stomach is injured as well. Secondly, and that is the time when uh, an endoscopy is done and also to assess the um, sequelae of this acid injury and then attempt to dilate it. Many patients after ingestion of this acid and alkali develop problems that includes inability to eat and then slowly they try, lo they lose weight. And um, the physicians will try assess to see the extent of injury uh, and then try dilate it. A good number of these patients can have a dilatation that is by uh, passing on some tubes through by, down the mouth, down the throat, uh, the narrowing of the foot pipe can be widened. And at the same time, uh, the, an endoscopy is done to look into see the sequelae of this acid into the stomach. Uh, some of these patients have a very tight structure or very irregular structures and then they will not be able to eat food. And these are the patients uh, which we generally um, make put in a tube into the abdomen called a feeding jejunostomy for feeding purposes and then we will wait and watch. These patients in the next couple of months, they will not be able to swallow even saliva and you can see them spitting into, uh, they will, all of them will carry a small container for them to spit into. 
at the end of six uh, months generally, we again reassess the whole situation to see the extent of injury, whether uh, the larynx, the, the voice box is involved, whether the, the extent of involvement of the foot pipe as well as the stomach and based on it, we have to devise on what surgery we have to undertake. Uh, if there is enough cervical esophagus or the available foot pipe in the neck, uh, it is uh, possible if the stomach is not injured to take the stomach and put it into the neck uh, to make a passage for food. But a good number of patients, we have to take the colon or the large intestine, which we have to connect to the uh, small bowel and the neck and this is called, this is called coloplasty. Um, there are few other patients in which this procedure will be very difficult because the injury will be very severe and there is hardly any uh, foot pipe in the neck available. That is when we link the colon to the lateral pharyngeal wall. So, subsequently the rehabilitation will take some time and uh, it'll, over a period of time the patients will be in a position to eat uh, um, solid food. And uh, the most important uh, thing in these patients is that uh, um, they'll have, um, they need to have uh, psychological counseling to find out what is the reason for their uh, acid ingestion and because the chances of these people trying to um, drink acid once again are very high. Um, so, uh, a proper psychological counseling will help these patients in the long run. So, effectively acid or alkali, a bathroom cleaners ingestion is a common thing which we see in our clinical practice, is seen in children and also adults, some by choice, some by chance and they lead to disastrous consequences where patients lose lot of weight, subsequently they have to be imaged with the help of uh, bariums and endoscope, some of them can be treated without surgery by dilatation, but a large number of them need very complex surgery which is undertaken in uh, high, high, high volume centers.